Hey, what's going on, everybody? Back with another how-to. Today, we're going to be replacing the spark plugs on this 96 Ford Ranger 4.0 six-cylinder. Now, this should fall in line with any second-gen Ranger, which is 1993 to 1997. So, let's get into it now. All right, guys, so we're under the hood, so... Of course, this is a six cylinder. We have three plugs on this side and then three on this side. There is our coil pack. And of course you can follow each wire to see where each wire goes. If you're doing wires, in addition to this, I would just do each wire individual one by one as you run through each spark plug. So we're gonna start right here on the harder side, arguably. We're going to do the first one, which is right there next to the alternator. So you can see that little red wire right there. That is the first wire right there. Okay, so I'm going to sneak my hand in there. I'm going to pull the wire off, and then we'll go ahead and get into removing the plug. All right, guys, so this might be hard to see. I'm going to take my hand and go through the radiator hose here. I'm just going to sneak my hand right around that plug, and I should be able to pull the wire right off of it all right so i have the wire free first wire out and you can see our plug right there <laughs> right there we're gonna go ahead and get that thing out all right guys so there's our plug now the spark plug is a 5 8 spark plug socket so i have a 5 8 spark plug socket with a two inch extension so what i'm going to do is go in the same way i'm going to sneak this right over Okay, so it might be hard to see with this angle, but I got our plug socket and the extension coming out right there. So I'm gonna take a 3H drive, all right, 3H drive ratchet. So I'm gonna go ahead and sneak on in here. All right, so I'm locked in and literally just gonna go ahead and start backing this thing out. So see if you can see me on it. There we go, broke free. These have been done in the recent past, and I'm not going to get into why I'm doing them again, but just know it ain't good. But we're going to go ahead and get this out since it's free. If you can see, I'm going to go ahead and finger loosen it out. All right, and there is the plug, guys. So first plug's out. All right, guys, so here is the old plug. Actually doesn't look horrific. Take it out. It is a motorcraft, and this is the exact same plug, another motorcraft. So, this right here is the new plug. Okay, so it is a motorcraft, as I mentioned. That is the part number. All right, it is SP486. So, that is the OEM motorcraft Ford plug replacement. All right, so it came out. So, we're putting back in. So, we're going to go ahead and get this thing prepped up all right now before we put this plug in we're going to go ahead and get this thing prepped up and ensure it's good now the spark plug gap for this plug should be between 52 and 56 hundredths so if i'm taking it on the spark plug gap tool here uh, it's about right at 55 maybe 56 so this is straight out of the box, pretty much exactly where we need to be. So we're going to go ahead and install it with this gap. Now, this will be more of a recent debate. Um, you know, a lot of these plug manufacturers now, especially with uh, certain platinum uh, and, you know, different metal plugs say that you don't need to use anti-seize. I don't care. I'm still going to put a little dab of anti-seize on there. It really isn't going to hurt anything either way. If you choose to put it in with it, go for it. If you choose to put it in without it, more power to you as well. Either way, honestly, as long as you're not globbing it on and putting a huge amount where this can't ground or causing an effect on the plug itself, it's really not an issue. So I'm gonna take a little bead, just put it over these first few threads, and then we're gonna go ahead and thread our plug right into the cylinder. All right, guys, and if you can see, I got an extremely small amount here. So I'm just gonna barely put it on these first threads here. Spread it out as best as I can. And I just got the littlest amount, like literally just a part of the threads are being covered. All right, so that's how much ADCs I'm putting on there. So let's go ahead and get this thing into the cylinder. All right, guys, so what I have here is I just have the plug in our 5.8 socket with the extension. I'm just going to go ahead and guide this through the same way we came out. And I'm just going to go ahead and start finger threading it in. So I'm just going to go ahead, 
navigate my way to the hole. All right, and I am in. Try to get an angle for you guys, but it's in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finger thread this in until I can't finger thread it anymore, okay? So just literally hand turning it into the cylinder. It is now tight. And the torque spec for these are seven to 15 foot pounds, okay? So for this particular push rod motor, it is seven to 15 foot pounds. It's a pretty wide range. In my opinion, you can get away with just a snug of a socket wrench like a half turn, whatever, and you should be fine. So I have it finger tight. I'm gonna grab the socket wrench, we're gonna snug it in, and that should be more than enough to get this plug snugged into the cylinder. All right, so I'm sneaking on in here. I don't know if you can see there, but I'll get this wrench in. All right, guys, so I got my socket wrench in. Really hard to see, but I'm barely moving it. All right, barely moved it, got it tight. Should be nice and tight in our cylinder, so I can go ahead and pull this off. So my whole socket wrench and extension, everything came off. That is now tight in our cylinder. And all I have to do is take the wire, guide it back on and press it right back over the plug. All right guys, really hard to see in there, but literally just press the wire back on. And there is right there, a little place for you know the wire to be pressed in. So it's safely routed to the plug, so. You know, these are gonna be kind of hard to get a good shot of. As you can see, there's really not much uh, camera room in here to get anything good as far as shot wise, but I'm gonna do the best I can for you guys and hopefully you can get the idea as this really isn't too hard. It's just a matter of knowing what variation of extensions and such to reach each one in its particular place. So we come to the middle here. See if I can get the light on it. There is our second plug wire, okay? So that's the second one we're gonna do here on the passenger side. What I wanna do is go ahead and pull that out with my hand, of course, and then we'll go ahead and get the plug out. All right, guys, this one's gonna be kind of tight to get your hand in, pull the wire out. I'm gonna go in the same way I did the last one. Go right through that hose. Uh, yep, there it is, popped off. There it is. Show you where my arm went in. Just went right through the radiator hose again and I was able to pop that second wire right off of our middle cylinder right there. All right guys, so the wire is off. Now we just gotta go ahead and get the plug out. So if we use the same setup as we did on the last plug on the first one, the two inch extension with the socket wrench, it's a really tight fit due to the AC bracket right there. So you would be almost hitting that. Even if you put the uh, plug socket and extension, drop that on first and then try to sneak the socket wrench and after it's still a really tight fit so what i found to be the best combination here is i have a 3 h drive little wobble socket it's probably about an inch but this combination if we go ahead and go in the same way we've been going under this radiator hose if i go ahead and drop this on it's going to be kind of hard to see there but i am on the plug okay it should give me just enough room to sneak our socket wrench in. Hopefully you can see where I am. Just gotta find a hole on the extension with the driver. And there it is. All right guys, I am on it. So that is a perfect fit and then bang, broke it right loose. And there it is. All right, so what I'm gonna do is pull this out can even go in with the whole setup. This is the setup, the wobble extension, small wobble extension with the uh, socket. So just gonna take our socket here, go back in, same way, right on the radiator hose, and I'm just going to start finger threading this out. Should be about almost there. Yep, there it is. Plug is out. So I'm gonna go ahead and maneuver this thing on out. There it is, second plug is out, guys. So this one looks very similar to the first. Not horrible. Um, you know, might be getting a little too hot. Be about the only thing I would say by looking at this. So 
put that down with the next one we're going to go ahead and prep the second plug and drop it in so i'm not going to go through the motions obviously the gap is going to be 52 to 56 hundredths and i'm going to put a dab of any c's as i did the last one and then i'll show you guys how we're going to drop it in and get it tightened down all right guys check the gap this one came in about 54 55 um, got the little dab of anti-seize on there as you can see it's not even over the whole threads just a little bit on there I'm gonna go in same way underneath of our radiator hose carefully guide this to the cylinder and it's hard to see but I think I'm in all right so yep I am start finger threading this thing on in and then when we get to a snug fit finger tight I'm gonna go ahead and lock it in with the socket wrench just a nice you know quarter to half turn just to make sure it's nice and tight and obviously i'll be using the same socket setup with the little wobble extension and the socket wrench so i'm gonna go ahead and get this hand tight and we'll lock it in all right guys sneaking my arm same way got my little one inch wobble extension i'm not sure if we can see it here there it is it's finger tight i'm just gonna delight this turn the socket wrench it's nice and tight nice and locked in Got that one locked in. So second middle one is officially in, probably hard to see. Take the plug wire here so you can see that. And we'll press it right back over, nice and tight. Yep, you can hear it pop and lock in. So it's pressed in. As you can see, it has a nice little uh, routing tab right here. So drops right down, routes right to it. So there we go, guys. That one is perfectly in there now so now we're going to go ahead and move on to the back one here on the passenger side all right guys on to the rear plug here so hopefully you can see the wire there now this is a little tight i'm going to go in right here now what you want to do is get your fingers around it like this so you can pull it out like this it's about the only way you're going to do it you're going to force it off like this so i'm going to take my hand I'm going in you're probably not going to be able to see it but i got my fingers around it there we go hope you heard it but there is our wire so wire is free and now we have access to the plug so let's go ahead and get that last rear plug on this passenger side out all right guys on the rear plug here so if you can see i got the socket wrench on it already i dropped it down the same way i popped the wire off just dropped the socket wrench right down there and i'm using the same extension setup i used on the last plug so it'll be the little one inch wobble extension on the 5 8 spark plug socket with our 3 h drive ratchet so let's go ahead see if we can get this thing loose not a lot of room here and she's a little tight it's going to be tight because of this hose here so you're just going to have to get the socket wrench in the right spot so you're not pressing up against it there we go had to back up a hair from it there we go guys got that loose so i'm gonna pull this up and out right through the same way we went in I keep hitting my light so i apologize hopefully there is some light on that plug so i'm gonna go down and grab it same way i've been going in there i'm actually gonna come with my right hand just like this so I'm holding the camera with my left, got my right hand on and I'm just spinning it on out. All right. And there it is, guys. Third plug on the back cylinder here on the passenger side is officially out. All right, guys, and same deal as last time, just a hair of anti C's. Check the gap, this was at 55. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna do it the same way I pulled it out. I'm gonna drop it in with my right hand and just turn it around once I get to the cylinder. Um, as you heard, I definitely moved the light, so we won't be seeing much, but you can get the idea. I'm really just feeling it out. I'm, I'm already in the hole, so I'm literally just dropping it in, finger tightening it now. So that's in. Let's see if I can show you guys here. But there it is. And there's our plug. I just went in reverse with my right hand, dropped it right in. So I'm gonna finger tight that up. And then we'll drop our socket in there and get a nice hand tight on there with the socket wrench and we're good on this side all right so i have that figured tight i'm gonna go ahead and drop the socket wrench right down in the same spot we've been dropping everything else down in i'm on it so i'm just gonna go ahead lock that in get it tight and then we'll go ahead and put the wire back on all right barely tight guys so that's good 
we'll go ahead and pull our socket wrench out and we got our wire right here so as you can see it has a tab as well so i'm just going to drop that on push it onto the plug and we'll be good all right guys so we have the passenger side all three plugs done we're going to come over here to the driver's side and we got a little bit better access a little bit better view of each one so there's the rear there's the middle and there's the front all right so we're gonna go ahead and start with this front one right here go ahead and see if i can put the light down and this should be pretty easily accessible plug i'm gonna go ahead and sneak my hand in here and pop that wire right off all right so gave me some good space there so now as you can see the plug we'll go ahead and get our socket and socket wrench and we'll get that thing out all right guys i'm going for a little bit different setup for this here it's a little bit longer reach than we had on the passenger side so i have a 10 inch extension on the socket go ahead and guide it on in all right so should give me some good leverage right there so i'm gonna go ahead and grab the socket wrench all right guys you can see i'm on it there we go Got that thing broken loose so i'm gonna go ahead and back that off with my hand go ahead and separate that soccer wrench and just back it out with the extension there it is guys whoa <laughs> plug out all right guys same deal as we've been doing check the gap everything is good this was about 56 and i got the little bit of anti seize on there so we're gonna guide this thing in. At least I hope to. <laughs> Let's see here. Yep. Got it in. All right. I'm just go ahead and get that thing to catch. I'm gonna finger thread this in, and then we'll snug this one in as well. All right, guys. That is finger tight. We'll get our socket wrench on there. Just give it a nice little turn tight, and then we'll have this first one on our driver's side done. All right, guys, barely a half turn, barely. All right, so that's nice and tight. We'll go ahead and pull this off and get our wire on. All right, guys, just sneaking under this power steering line here. We'll go ahead and press that wire right back onto the plug. There we go. There it is, guys, nice and tight. And keep in mind that is routed with tabs as well all the way behind the intake manifold to the ignition coil as all the wires on this side are. So just be aware of that. And that's how all these fall in line if you're doing the wires as well. So there we go, plug in. Now we're gonna move to the middle one here. Hopefully you can see that. Should be able to get my fingers on it. It's gonna be hard. I'll go ahead and give you guys a visual real quick. This EGR pipe right here is going to be in our way for these next two plugs. So not only is the big middle, but those two little ones are as well. So there we go, guys. Just snuck my hand in. It's able to pull it out. There's the wire. We'll leave it right there for right now. So now let's go ahead and get that plug out. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and get that plug out now. I have a weird combination set up here, but... It's gonna work and that's all that matters. So yes, there's probably another combination you can get to work, but this is what I'm gonna use. This is a 10 inch wobble extension. I have a 1 4th to 3 8 drive adapter and I got another 1 4th 3 8 adapter the reverse way into my 3 8 drive ratchet. So 3 8 drive ratchet, 3 8 drive adapter to 1 4th wobble adapter into spark plug socket. So. We're gonna come at it from the top here, okay? So I actually have just about the right amount of space here. Yep, I'm locked in. All right, so let's see if we can get, oh, <laughs> knock the light, but I got it loose, guys. The light is just fighting. But here we go, guys. As you can see, this is loose. I'll go ahead and Get this socket wrench out of here and we'll back it out with just the extension. All right guys, just the extension here. Spinning this thing out just by hand, as you should be able to do. I think it's out. I think I'm gonna drop it. <laughs> there we 
There it is, guys. I got it. And there is our middle plug. All right, guys. About now, we should know the routine. Check the gap. This one was at about 54, 55. Littlest dab of anti seize. And I actually, to guide it in, I have a four inch wall extension. So that's how I'm going to access this to put it in. So I'm going to go ahead and guide this thing in here. And I feel like this would have been a little bit easier to guide with than that big one. And that's why I did it. And it worked because. I am catching threads. So I'm gonna go ahead and figure tight that in and then we'll go ahead and tighten that down. All right, guys, got the socket wrench back on with the 10 inch extension. Give it the littlest turn there. And I think we're locked in pretty good. Yeah, feels like it. Yep. All right, guys, so that is locked in. Plug is fully tightened in there and I'm just going to go ahead and press that wire back on and then we'll move to the back cylinder all right so we have made it to the last cylinder wire is on the middle one so we're going to have the EGR pipe fighting this here too but we should have easy access a little bit easier than the middle one at least to pull that wire off all right got that pulled off and now let's go ahead and get that plug out all right guys so there is our plug and the setup I'm going to be using to get to that last one. So I'm going to be using a 3 8 drive socket wrench, 3 8 to 1 4 adapter, 1 4 4 inch wobble extension to a 3 8 adapter back to our spark plug socket. So I'm actually going to go under the EGR pipe on this one. So let's see if we can get this wobble to cooperate with us and get that on the plug there. Kind of hard one handed here, but doing my best. There we go. So as you can see, I'm under the pipe and I got it. All right, yes, it is coming out. So as you can see, I'm backing it out. I'm gonna go ahead and get this last plug out and we'll get the new one in. All right, guys, last plug is out here. And I'll put it with the other ones. I'm going to go ahead and prep our new plug and we'll get that in and we'll have all six of the plugs in our 4.0 V6 replaced. Alright guys, going to go ahead and put our new plug in with the 4 inch wobble extension set up, just how we took it out. Now this was about uh, 55 on the gap, got the littlest bit of anti seize on there, so let's go ahead and thread this in. Alright guys, so I'm just going to go under, same way I took it out, and go ahead and get that thing started finger thread it in and I think I got it yeah it's in all right so I'm gonna go ahead and get this one threaded in by hand and then we'll uh, go ahead and take the socket wrench to it and finish this up all right guys it's finger tight got my socket wrench back on with the same setup we took it out with and yep, just a littlest turn I got a little bit between a quarter and a half turn so make sure yeah, it feels nice and tight, guys. So, got our rear driver's side plug all locked in nice and tight. I'm going to go ahead and take our wire, put it right back over the plug here. Hopefully you can see that. All right, and there we go. Wire is on. So, we have all six of our new plugs in the engine. All right, guys, so there's, of course, different combos of extensions and adapters and things you can use to do this job. More than one way would work. This is the way I did it, and it was relatively easy if you have all the essential extensions and adapters. And honestly, it's really not that many you need to have in the first place anyway. So, yes, there is other combinations you can use to do this successfully. This is what I used, and obviously, as you just saw in the video, it worked very well and very easy. And I got all six of these plugs out and in with relatively no issue and a lot of ease. So, I hope this helped with doing the spark plugs on your 40 ford ranger make sure you stay tuned because you never know when i might be wrenching on this thing again and until next time guys